Before boarding Celebrity Ascent, I wasn't sure what to expect. It had been about a year since we cruised on Celebrity Beyond, and we mostly had a good experience. But since then, I'd been hearing mixed reviews about Celebrity, and read a fair share of comments on social media that skewed slightly negative. I was eager to find out if indeed, as some had said, Celebrity had lost its shine, or if it was redeemed. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now we boarded Celebrity Ascent just about five or six weeks after it was launched and we knew it was going to be a beautiful ship. But we were eager to find out what would our experience be like in terms of the dining, the drinks, and the overall atmosphere on board. Now we did a seven day Caribbean cruise on board Celebrity Ascent and in this video I will share with you our experience, I'll show you around the cruise ship, answer some common questions, and share some tips and tricks along the way. Now before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. The cruise ship. Celebrity Ascent is the fourth in Celebrity's Edge class series. Now in contrast to the Edge and the Apex, which are about 130,000 tons, Celebrity Ascent is most similar to Celebrity Beyond, which is 140,000 tons. Now this ship is reported to have cost about $1 billion to build. So needless to say, this ship is absolutely stunning from the interior areas and public spaces to the outdoor areas to the cabins. Now, as you enter the ship on embarkation day, you will see the Grand Plaza. It is absolutely gorgeous. You'll see the stunning martini bar. It really does come alive at night as well as Cafe El Baccio. Now also on the interior of the cruise ships on deck four and five, you'll find the casino. The casino is a little bit bigger than the casino was on Celebrity Beyond. You'll find the shops and boutiques, the theater, the club, and the absolutely beautiful and unique space Eden. Now I'll share more about the activities and entertainment that happened in all of these venues later, but these areas are well utilized. Now, as you head outdoors on the top deck, you'll find the large resort pool. I think that this is the largest pool that I've ever seen on a cruise ship. And there is a lot of deck space and chairs as well. Now beyond the doors of the resort pool, you'll find the solarium pool. This is an adult only pool and it is covered. Now going up a deck, you'll find the champagne shaped hot tubs, all walking or jogging track. And as you move aft, or towards the back of the ship, you will find the rooftop terrace area. Now, most of the time, this area felt like a lawn club. It was just beautiful. You also had games showing at different times and movies as well. Now to the left, you will see a couple of plunge pools before you head towards the back of the cruise ship to find the sunset bar. Now the sunset bar was definitely one of my favorite places to be, especially to have a drink, you guessed it, at sunset before we went inside to have a drink. And by the way, if you're looking for a great spot to take and sail away, that is definitely the location. Now I'll show you around my cabin a little bit later, but the furnishings and decor were elegant, modern, and comfortable. All right, let's get into what everybody cares about, the cruise food. Yes, we are talking food and dining, the buffet. The buffet on Celebrity Ascent was probably one of the very best buffets that I've ever seen on a cruise ship. It is excellent. They have a lot of different stations and there really is something for everyone from carving stations to salad stations to the pasta stations and international stations. Now the buffet was clearly an area where celebrity really did care about what they were serving. There was, I think it was on embarkation day or maybe on the first sea day, there was an absolutely beautiful burrata bar. There were always Mediterranean stations on the last sea day, just something to check out. Even though there were lineups, the only time that there were lineups really in the buffet, there were seafood options, big shrimp, little crab claws, and more. Now, when we were on Celebrity Beyond last year, something that we had noticed was the evening buffet was really 
quite reduced to about maybe 50% or less of the stations were open. However, this time our son Ethan did check out the evening buffet. He went there for dessert after we did have sushi and he said actually about 75% was open. The choices were much more numerous. He did have some crepes and he said they were delicious. Now for the main dining or included restaurants, Celebrity Ascent has four different options. They are all included and you can choose to eat in any of these different restaurants. Now the restaurants include Normandy, Tuscan, Cosmopolitan, and Cyprus. Now the interesting thing about these different restaurants is that there is a portion of the menu that is specific to those restaurants. So if you do really enjoy that type of food, it's a good idea to eat in that restaurant. And this way you also have a chance to experience the different decor at the different restaurants. However, the other part of the menu remains the same in all of the restaurants for whatever is on the menu of that evening. Now I have to be honest, when I did my review of Celebrity Beyond last year, I had a few criticisms about some of the food in terms of the taste quality, and presentation in those included restaurants, but I do think that they have improved. The taste was very good. We ate in the main dining room four times out of seven, and it really was very good. I do think Celebrity could still add more choices to the menu. I know that they were supposed to be doing that, but I'm not sure if they've yet made that change. Now, food is very subjective, but I think out of all four of those restaurants, our favorite was Normandy. They have a main dish, I think it's called steak en croute, but basically this is beef wellington, at least to my taste. It was absolutely delicious and I do recommend it. Now, by the way, if you have some favorites from celebrities main dining menus, please leave them down in the comments below because I know that will be helpful to other people. Specialty restaurants. Now during our cruise, we ate in Eden, Rooftop Grill and Raw on Five, sushi. Now, by the way, before our cruise, Celebrity did have a special on dining. So definitely before your cruise, if you are going on one, look out for that. I think that we had 35 or 30% 30 off and that definitely made it cheaper to purchase this ahead of time. Eden. Now, Eden blew us away. We've eaten at a lot of specialty restaurants on cruise ships, but the food quality, the taste, the presentation, the service, it was a true 10 out of 10. I highly recommend. Now, the other restaurant that we tried, which was new to us for this cruise, was Rooftop Grill. We actually made a change in plans. We were going to be going to Fine Cut Steakhouse, which we've eaten at before. We know it's gonna be really good, but we felt like being outdoors. So we spontaneously changed our reservation as long as we were able to. We were to Rooftop Grill and it did not disappoint, but I do have a little bit of a tip that was shared with us. Now, when it came to choosing our meal, we didn't want to go with the burgers. We wanted to go with the steaks, especially for the cost. And what our waiter told us is that the filet mignon and the ribeye is the same cut at Rooftop Grill as at Fine Cut. Now I can tell you we enjoyed the food, the service and the atmosphere. Raw on five. Now we're not huge sushi eaters, but we did feel like a little bit of a change in pace and we did really enjoy raw on five. Now we had sushi and we had some main dishes, but I do have a little bit of feedback when it comes to the main dish. The main dish didn't come with a side like rice. Now we did ask about this because we remembered rice being part of the main dishes before and our waiter did confirm that you can add rice by request. So even if you don't see rice on the menu, apparently you can order it. Cafe Albaccio. Now, even though the specialty coffee and the specialty teas are an additional cost, unless of course you do have the beverage package, but all of the pastries, and they did add a few little savory little sandwiches and things like that, that is all included. By the way, if you're gluten-free or vegan, they did have some really nice options as well. Eden for lunch. Now you almost could miss the fact that Eden is open for lunch. I believe it might only be open on sea days. It's only open for about an hour and a half, I think from 12 to 1.30 or 11.45 to 1.15. So make sure that you do check your schedule, but there are really nice salads and sandwiches, and it really is a nice place to eat your lunch. Room service. Now we opted not to order any of the room service that did incur an additional delivery charge. However, we did order the complimentary continental breakfast. There was a fruit plate and some danishes that were nice when we had to leave the ship early for a port day. All right, let's move on to activities and entertainment before we talk about the drinks. Now, one of the things that really did surprise me on Celebrity Ascent 
is how much activity there was available both during the day and the evening and it was so energetic now at the pool during the day on sea days there were pool games it was very very happening and inside the cruise ship there were some activities as well including zumba and trivia now i have to say the cruise director on board celebrity ascent was probably the most energetic and interactive cruise director that i have seen on any cruise ship in years. Now, during the day, you had a band playing at the pool and occasionally, I think there was a DJ as well, or at least there was some music. And that same band would often be playing in the martini bar area in the evening. Now, in the evening, there's a big choice of activities from theater and production shows to shows in Eden to the silent disco and karaoke in the club. The drinks and drink packages. Now, overall, the drinks are very good on Celebrity, but I know a lot of times people do have questions about the drink package, what is included with the classic package versus the premium. Now, I have to say we upgraded our package from classic to premium for only $6.99, so about $7 a few weeks before our cruise when it was on special. I do suggest that you do that because I did notice that in terms of the menu for drinks, the drinks are a little bit more pricey than they had been before. And I'm not sure that all of the drinks that I would have wanted would have been included in the classic package otherwise. So if you are able to find that for a good price, I do suggest that you do upgrade. Now, something to note when it comes to wines is not all wines are available in all restaurants or even at all bars. Now, we basically just went with the flow. So if a wine that we drank at one bar wasn't available in the next or in one restaurant and wasn't available in the next, we just went with a different option. But I do really think, especially when you have the premium package, this is more feedback, I guess, for celebrity. I don't know if they ever watch any of these videos, but I do think that it would be nice, especially for a luxury or relaxed luxury cruise line to offer more consistent options when it comes to the wine. Now, when I find a favorite drink, I do like to share it. So here is a good one. At the Sunset Bar, there's a drink called Beyond Signature. It is so good. If you like a little bit of a coconut flavor, but just a very different taste, this is a drink to try. And of course, the classic Aperol Spritz, they did it pretty well on this ship. Now, by the way, whether you drink or not, you do want to check out the Martini Show. I think it's at 10 or 10.30 in the Martini Bar. Those bartenders are just fabulous. Okay, let's talk about the service on board and then we'll go off the cruise ship into the ports of call. The service. Now, you know what they say, a problem can always happen, but how it is handled is really everything. Guest services was phenomenal on board Celebrity Ascent and so was our cabin attendant, the housekeeping supervisor when we did have an issue with our cabin. It was all resolved. I will leave a video at the end of this one that explains it all, but I was very impressed with the way Celebrity handled that situation. Now, beyond this, the service was very good on the cruise ship and something I really like about Celebrity, they still do it, is they do have some nice little touches. Now, some of those things is handing out cold towels on the pool deck and as well when you come back in cruise ports of call. Now, the only feedback that I have that is a slight criticism is that on this ship, the bars were very busy. I think a lot of people do really have these beverage packages and it does seem like at those busy bars, they do need more bartenders, more servers walking around asking people if they'd like drinks and more busboys or people cleaning up around the cruise ship because it really does get very busy. Cruise ports. Now, our itinerary stopped in Nassau, Bahamas, Cozumel, Mexico, and Grand Cayman. Now, we only booked one cruise line excursion and I will share with you how that went. So first, we went to Nassau, Bahamas. We went to Baja Mar. Now, the resort itself is beautiful. It is well kept. However, I will be honest, I am glad that I got this excursion at half price. It was still, I think about 125 US dollars per person for this excursion. Unfortunately, when we got to Baja Mar, something that we found out is we could go on all of the water slides, but the part of Baja Mar that was more that beach resort, we unfortunately didn't have any access to. And when it came to the dining as well, our dining was limited to a cruise menu that was very fast foodish and it wasn't really what we thought when we had booked this excursion. Now this is maybe on us to do a little more research when we are booking an excursion, but if I had young children that were gonna use a lot of the water slides, I'm sure that I would have been very pleased, but I can tell you what one of my sons said. He said, we left an absolutely gorgeous cruise ship 
resort to come to another resort that we paid extra for. So in hindsight, we probably could have stayed on the cruise ship. Cozumel, Mexico. Now Cozumel, Mexico remains one of my favorite ports, even though I've probably been there nine or 10 times now. We went to Paradise Beach Club. We've gone there over all of the years. We just love it there. It's reasonably priced for an all-inclusive pass that includes unlimited drinks and food. Now you definitely have to try the shrimp ceviche and Grand Cayman. Now, as much as I do enjoy Grand Cayman, this was a day that we decided to stay on the cruise ship and enjoy. Please let me know if you were on Celebrity Ascent, would you choose one day when you were in port to stay on board the cruise ship? Please let me know down in the comments below. Our cabin. Now we had an infinite veranda on deck seven. The decor itself in the cabin is beautiful. It's bright, it's modern, it's elegant. I really like how much storage space there is in this cabin and especially how roomy that bathroom is and even the shower is larger than on most cruise ships. Now I particularly like the technology from your phone. You could adjust the blinds to lift them up or down. You can adjust the temperature in the cabin and you can open, close and dim the lights. Now while I do like an infinite veranda cabin, I don't particularly like the configuration itself of this cabin. Now I did talk about that in another video. I will leave a playlist of videos at the end of this one if you haven't seen that or my Celebrity Beyond Infinite Veranda tour and video. That will be helpful but I did find a little bit of a way if you are wondering how do I check on the configuration of the cabin. Something that I found is if you look at the deck plan there is a spot where you can see the indent of the cabin itself. Now the indent just means that that is a larger space. Now that larger space that you see in the deck plan is where the bed would be and that shorter or more narrow space is where the couch would be. So that is one way that you could find out ahead of time what type of cabin configuration you have. Now I hope that helps. I know another question that some people had when it came to my infinite veranda cabin is what was the noise that the cabin made? Well, it seemed like there was a little bit of a gap in the door or in the ceiling and by making that adjustment they were able to fix it. And again if you don't know what I'm talking about I will leave a video at the end of this one. So what are my impressions and who do I think this cruise ship is for? Now firstly something that I noticed on this cruise was that overall the clientele was younger than I remember in the past. Now obviously there's a wide range of age of people that go on this cruise ship, but it was skewing younger than I recall. As well, the music was louder. There was a lot more going on. So there definitely was more activity and I would say a little bit of youthful energy, which don't get me wrong, I don't think it's a bad thing. There were also a lot of areas that you could still find that are quiet and a lot of activities and things to do for everyone. So do I think that Celebrity has lost its shine, so to speak? No, I do not. But I do think that it is a cruise line that is evolving, especially with the Edge class ships, but with the variety of dining options, all of which are really a very good quality overall with their beautiful, comfortable and elegant cruise ships with their quality entertainment, there really is something for everyone. Now I do think that when it comes to making some of the changes that Celebrity has made over the last year or two, that they could be perhaps a little bit more cautious to not make some changes that they later roll back based on some negative customer feedback, especially when it comes to their most loyal clientele. Now I would love to hear from you. Please let me know if you are going to be sailing on Celebrity Ascent. And if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments as well. Now, if you've already sailed on Celebrity Ascent, please let me know your thoughts and your mini review as well. Now I'll leave those videos about the Infinite Veranda at the end of this one in case you do wanna check that out. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.